Welcome to Science at FMNH, a podcast and video series that explores the behind-the-scenes science, collections, and research at Chicago's Field Museum. We continue our discussion with Rick Ree by exploring how the structure of floral beaks influences the evolution of flowers. My name is uh, Rick Ree. I'm a, a curator in the botany department at the Field Museum. So the flowers of Pedicularis vary in terms of a couple of very conspicuous traits, one of which is the upper lip of the flower, which encloses the, the anthers where the pollen is stored. And in many species, that upper lip has become elongated into what we call a beak. Through the beak is threaded the style, and at the end is the stigma, which receives the pollen from other plants when the pollinator visits, the bumblebee visits the flower and deposits pollen at the, at the tip of the stigma. And so there's a great diversity in the sizes and shapes of these beaks in Pedicularis in terms of how long the beak is, to the degree to which it's curved or twisted or coiled. The beak in Pedicularis, the fact that the beak varies so much among species is, I think, unique to the genus. It may be the only group of plants that has a beaked galea. And the fact that we see such diversity of galea shape and morphology in this genus coinciding with the fact that there are so many species concentrated in this relatively small re geographic region leads us to wonder why so many different kinds of beaks have evolved. Where these plant species are existing in the Hangwon Mountains, they are being pollinated very frequently by the same species of bumblebee. That is to say, if you go to a, a meadow where you see several species of Pedicularis uh, flowering, you'll see that most of the time it will go from one plant to another of the same species. But every so often, that bee will switch to another species. And it's that point where it switches that there's this possibility of transferring foreign, incompatible pollen to another species. We would expect that there should be natural selection to minimize that transfer of foreign pollen. And so one mechanism by which you can imagine evolution minimizing that transfer occurring is, is to select for evolutionary divergence in the morphology of the beak of two species that co-occur and are being pollinated by the same bumblebee. Because if the shape of the galea is different and the length of the galea beak is different, and the degree of curvature of the galea beak is different, then the stigma is going to contact the body of the bumblebee in a different position. And so if one species is preferentially depositing pollen on a bee in one part of the body and uh, a different species, due to its different galea morphology, is depositing pollen on a different part of the bumblebee, then that reduces the chance that if that bumblebee visits those two species, that it's going to transfer pollen between them. 